And so the grid forms up for the start. They have 22 laps of hard racing ahead of them, 311 miles. There's a Formula 2 race for 1,500cc cars being run concurrently with the 2.5-litre Formula 1 Grand Prix. Umberto Malioli drives car number 20, a factory 1500 Porsche. Carl Kling wishes him luck. Car 21 is Edgar Barth's similar car, a strip Porsche for Formula 2. Fangio is on pole after lapping the resurfaced circuit 16 seconds inside his year-old Lancia Ferrari lap record. This lightweight Maserati is a car he likes very much. And Fangio's French teammate Jean Berra and Peter Collins of Ferrari on the outside of the front row. Ferrari, Maserati, Ferrari. And they're off. Mike Hawthorne leads the charge down into the south curve. Followed by Collins, Fangio, Beira, Muzo, Shell, Evans, Gregory, Brooks, Herman, and Roy Salvadori's Formula 2 Cooper following behind. And the stripped out sports Porsches are showing well. The two English driven Lancia Ferraris lead. Fangio's third. They stream along the back straight behind the pits with some late breaking into the north curve coming up. And then down through the forest towards Versiphon. It's Hawthorne, Collins, Fangio, Beira. Oh, and Moss's Van Wall. It's being passed by Musso's Ferrari and Harry Shell right up behind with the third lightweight Maserati. Then it's Tony Brooks's Van Wall. And Lewis Evans. And then Salvador in the leading F2 Cooper. Private Maseratis lead Cooper and Porsche down across the Adenauer Bridge. Australian privateer Paul England's Formula 2 Cooper in pursuit. This is the lowest part of the track. From here, they climb on up to Hoyart. Lap one and it's the carousel. The Ferraris rip through, followed by Fangio. And then Beira. Musso in his Lancer Ferrari, followed by Shell in the lightweight. Then it's the van wall of Brooks, followed by Moss. And then Lewis Evans. Maston Gregory leads Herman, and the Formula 2 Porsches are next. There's Bart, and Malioli coming through now. Number 18 is Spaniard Pacagodius 250F, leading yet more 250Fs. And another Porsche. The race is definitely on. 1957 German Grand Prix roars on, out of the forests and round into the Schwalbenschwanz. through Dottinger Hoy and along the Hedgeline Strait. Completing lap one, it's Hawthorne, followed by Collins. And Fangio in hot pursuit. Here's Brooks leading Moss in the van walls, but Moss just about to go by him. And in the south curve, it's Hawthorne. And then Collins. And then Fangio. And just look how relaxed he is. Jean Beira. Luigi Musso. And Harry Shell fighting tooth and nail. And Sterling Moss, followed by Tony Brooks who with Moss had won the British Grand Prix only two weeks before in Van Wall's first big win. Lewis Evans, and then Maston Gregory. Hans Hermann, 
And here's Englishman Roy Salvadori in his Formula 2 Cooper Climax. And he's leading the class from Edgar Bart's Porsche sports car and the sister car of Umberto Malioli. Really, these Porsche sports cars would be better off in the Targa Floria or the Mille Miglia. And Bruce Halford in his private Maserati 250F. Followed closely by Jack Brabham in the second works Cooper Climax and Giorgio Scarlatti in the fourth string factory Maserati. And Paco Godia. And here's Holland's Count de Beaufort in his private Porsche. Lap two after their siphon. Fangio is closing up on the Ferraris. They are running non-stop, heavy with 50 gallons of fuel. But Fangio's Maserati has started light on half tanks, and he knows he must refuel. Running hard as they dare, the two English Ferrari drivers hold off Fangio around the swoops and curves and the climbs and falls of this majestic German circuit. Hawthorne and Collins are trying everything they know to keep the maestro at bay. But he's closing, little by little. A bit on cornering here, a bit on braking there. Here, they swoop down across the Adenau Bridge. And Peter Collins knows exactly where Fangio is, filling up his rearview mirrors. They turn right here, up the hill towards Hoat. And at the carousel, the Lancia Ferraris run first and second. Right in there, Fangio third, Beira fourth. Muzo's Ferrari fifth. And then Harry Shell, the Franco-American, chasing the leaders on lap 1500cc Cooper Formula 2, right in his wheel tracks. And then it's Herman's 250F and Bart's Porsche. Horace Gould's Maserati, driven by the burly garage owner from Bristol in England, holds off future triple world champion Jack Brabham's Formula 2 Cooper. Starting lap three, Fangio splits the Ferraris in the south curve. The score tower lights to show he's past Hawthorne. Fangio Maserati number one is in the lead. Here he comes, back towards the pits under the Antonius Bridge. Peter Collins now second, Hawthorne third. Beira's Maserati is also running light. These 250F factory cars will have to stop around half distance, 11 or 12 of these long 14-mile laps. Fangio leads Hawthorne and Collins past the pits, trying his hardest to pull away. He has to make time to have that scheduled pit stop. This is Fangio, perfectly in control of the situation. And he's followed by Hawthorne, Collins, Beira, and Shell looking a bit desperate. And Bertocchi has Fangio's pit signal ready. It reads, six laps, 11 seconds lead over Hawthorne and Collins. So Fangio is building a time cushion to permit a quick refuel without losing too much lead. And look at those movie cameras, no video back then. Beira is the first to pit, ending lap 10. This looks unbelievable today, but this is a race stop, 50s style. Bertocchi opens the filler cap. Beira snatches a quick wash. Fresh tires are fitted on great-looking Barani wah wheels. Now, watch that filler cap closely. Beira leaps in, breaks their cap off. Here he is rejoining ninth with the broken cap refitted. Hey, what about your goggles? Fangio is breaking the lap record to build that vital lead. On lap eight, he clocked nine minutes, 30.8 seconds. He's in perfect control here, on his way up to Hoat. He's got a nice lead, but he knows he has to increase it if he's to get that pit stop in. Muzo goes through his third string works Ferrari, trailing a Maserati. 
And here's the Italian works Porsche driver, Malioli. He's sliding the Formula 2 cast car over the bridge, onto the uphill climb, and then right and away round the bluff at Exmuller. Lap 10 sees another Fangio lap record, 9 minutes, 29.5 seconds, and look how he throws it into the carousel. And Hawthorne chases Collins, who's taken second place. Muzo pouring it on. And then Tony Brooks in the bad handling van wall. Fangio's lead has now increased to 28 seconds. But will it be enough? 1957. And Fangio heads his leading lightweight Maserati into the pits. Can he rejoin and keep in contact with the non-stop Lancia Ferraris now catching up fast? Bertocchi on the filler. A knockoff hub nut spins back on. But watch that far side mechanic. He's lost the hub nut. Let's see that again. First of all, he takes the hub nut off and removes the worn tar, throwing it away. Then he brings in the fresh wheel and tar, fits it onto the hub. But the hub nut has spun away under the car. Well, we've always known this pit stop was bungled. But this truly historic footage now shows us exactly why it happened. Meanwhile, Hawthorne and Collins storm by into a handsome lead. They've both seen Fangio in the pits and know they've got to put some distance between themselves and him if either of them are to win this Grand Prix. At last, Fangio rejoins. His bungled stop has taken 52 seconds. He's now third, 45 seconds behind the Lancia Ferraris. He knows they've gone by, and the adrenaline is rushing. We're about to see what a true maestro could achieve. Fangio is chasing hard. Lap 16, the gap is 33 seconds. Next lap, it's 25.5. Their siphon, Hawthorne and Collins flat out in their powerful Lancia Ferrari V8s. Fangio's still neat, but even faster. First 0.4 off the lap record, then another 3.2 seconds off. On lap 19, Fangio takes another 1.9 off his lap record. The Formula 2 Porsches keep circulating. The Lancia Ferraris round the carousel. Followed closely by Fangio the Hunter. His blood's up. He can't see him yet, but he knows he's close. The gap is 13.5 seconds. Muzo in fourth place. And Moss with the bouncing van wall, fifth. Beira is back up to sixth. And Harry Shell running seventh. And through the south curve, Hunted and Hunter rip away into their 20th lap. Hawthorne, Collins and Fangio now visibly working hard. He's wringing every drop of performance available from his Maserati. At the end of the straight, just short of the pits, oh, it's fantastic. Fangio is right with the two Ferraris. He's lapped in 9 minutes, 17.4. That's 24.2 seconds inside his 56-lap record. And in the south curve, Mike's sliding wide. Collins is in tight, and the old man is third in eating them alive. Behind the pits to the north curve, he's diving down the inside under braking on Collins' inside. He's through! He's through into second place in the white Maserati has been lapped, whilst Collins has fallen back. Edgar Bath leads the Formula 2 class since Salvadoris Cooper has broken its suspension. These 1600cc Porsches treat the Grand Prix like a 24-hour race. They just run and run. And at the carousel for the last time, the crowds acknowledge the maestro's finest race. But Hawthorne still hasn't given up. He's giving it all he's got. But poor Pete Collins' clutch is frozen, one goggle lens is smashed, so he's settled for third. Fangio takes the flag, 
winning his 24th and final Grand Prix and the Drivers' World Championship for the fifth time, the fourth in successive years. As he pulls in through the gate at the end of the pits, Mike Hawthorne hatless draws alongside and look at the smile on his face. Look at that reception. Adriana Fangio's wife is ready with a kiss and the ecstatic Maserati mechanics with more. They shoulder their champion to the victory dais. The British boys show how to lose with grace. They're delighted for the old boy as they call him. Ugolini kisses Hawthorne and Collins joins the party. Fangio's greatest drive is history. He's just become world champion driver for the fifth time, a record.